It's a vast pottery army which is slowly being unearthed from the tomb where it's lain for more than 2,000 years. But what if the man behind this silent legion, the ruler who unified China over two millennia ago, carried secrets capable of reshaping not only our understanding of the ancient world, but perhaps even the present? It's the site where China's first emperor, Qin Sha Huang, was laid to rest around 2,000 years ago. It becomes clear to the research team that these statues were carved and then buried as an army to protect the emperor in his afterlife. This is the resting place of China's first emperor, Jin Shi Huang, buried over 2,000 years ago beneath an immense funerary complex. For decades, researchers believed the terracotta army was simply a symbolic guard for his afterlife. But recent scientific findings have revealed something staggering, evidence that could rewrite the story of the first emperor in ways few imagined. Yet the truth is not simple. Each discovery only deepens the mystery. Let's explore the hidden DNA of China's first emperor and the monumental implications behind it. Before we continue, Make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Monumental Legacy When Qin Shi Huang rose to power in 221 BC, he accomplished something no leader before him had achieved. He unified the fractured warring states into a single empire and declared himself China's first emperor. His rule lasted barely a decade, but in that short time, he reshaped China so profoundly that many of his reforms endured for centuries. Jin understood power in two languages, practicality and symbolism. Practically, he standardized weights, measures, and currency, and forced one written script and created legal structures that could function across the massive territories under his command. Symbolically, he built on a scale no previous kingdom could match. Under his orders, regional fortifications were connected into the earliest form of the Great Wall, stretching thousands of miles when measured in modern terms. He oversaw vast road systems, some reaching over 4,000 miles, designed not only for trade, but for the swift movement of armies. He built canals, increased irrigation, and expanded infrastructure in ways that announced the strength of a unified empire. But his greatest symbol of power was reserved for his death. Near Mount Li in modern-day Shanxi province lies the sprawling mausoleum complex of Qin Shi Huang, a 20-square-mile underground empire. Ancient historian Sima Chan wrote that construction began long before Qin unified China. By the time he became emperor, thousands of laborers were already working around the clock. Later accounts claimed over 700,000 workers contributed to the project, a number debated but reflective of the astonishing scale of the undertaking. At the heart of the complex stands a massive earthen pyramid, about 250 feet tall. Surrounding it is a miniature recreation of the empire he ruled, palaces, administration halls, armories, stables, an eternal kingdom built underground, and of course, the Terracotta Army. Discovered in 1974 by farmers digging a well, the clay soldiers stand in formation, each one unique in face and posture. Generals stand nearly six foot five, soldiers around five foot eleven. Horses, chariots, and real bronze weapons complete the army. Once brightly painted, the colors vanished seconds after they were exposed to the modern air. The emperor's obsession with order and control echoes through every statue. It took master sculptors, metal workers, and massive resources to create an army of this size, a project unmatched in the ancient world. Yet despite decades of excavation, the central tomb has never been opened. Ancient texts claim it contains rivers of mercury, star-studded ceilings, and deadly traps. 
Soil tests around the mound show unusually high mercury levels, suggesting at least part of the legend may be true. For now, it remains sealed, one of archaeology's greatest untouched mysteries. Unearthing the Builders In 2003, archaeologists excavating near the mausoleum uncovered a new clue, skeletal remains scattered near the terracotta pits. These were not elite burials or ceremonial guards. They appeared to be laborers who built the emperor's underground kingdom. Historical records hinted at brutal working conditions. Sima Qian described countless workers conscripted to dig tunnels and shape clay structures, many dying before the project ended. Later accounts suggested thousands may have perished from exhaustion, starvation, or silence enforced by execution. The bones confirmed the harsh reality. Researchers extracted mitochondrial DNA from 19 individuals, and the results shocked them. 16 distinct maternal haplogroups appeared among the samples, an unusually high level of diversity for a single work site. Some matched populations in northern China, others in the far south, and at least one showed a genetic linkage resembling ancient Japanese lineages. The findings suggested a workforce drawn from across East Asia, prisoners of war, conscripts, relocated peasants, or laborers transported from distant regions. The physical condition of the remains, stress fractures, malnutrition, lack of burial goods, reinforced the story of forced labor on an imperial scale. The Japan-linked lineage raised one of the most intriguing questions. While later centuries show clear records of China-Japan contact, this sample pushed the timeline far earlier. Some scholars argue it hints at prehistoric migration patterns. Others say the similarity might not reflect direct contact. Either way, it opened a door to a larger genetic puzzle. The sample size was small, and mitochondrial DNA reveals only the maternal line, important caveats. But the diversity alone paints a vivid picture. The mausoleum was built by an empire-wide network of laborers whose lives left traces written directly into their bones. Beneath the surface, the burial mound itself rises quietly above the plains, covered in trees and shaped by 2,000 years of wind and rain. But beneath it lies a sealed chamber, so well protected that no archaeologist has dared to open it. Sima Qian's descriptions remain our best guide. According to him, the chamber was designed as a miniature cosmos. The ceiling glittered with constellations. The floor displayed a map of the empire, with mercury rivers flowing through carved channels. Merely a legend, until soil tests around the mound revealed high levels of mercury, giving weight to the ancient account. But mercury is toxic. Breaking into the tomb could expose researchers to dangerous vapor and permanently damage any surviving artifacts. Archaeologists also fear ancient traps described by Sima Qian, crossbows set to fire automatically at intruders. Whether such mechanisms still survive is unknown, but the risk cannot be dismissed. Even more concerning is preservation. When the terracotta warriors were first unearthed, their painted surfaces disintegrated in minutes. If murals, fabrics, or lacquered objects lie inside the tomb, exposing them too soon could destroy them forever. Until technology advances, the chamber will remain sealed, a time capsule untouched since 210 BCE. The DNA For decades, Qin Shi Huang's tomb was considered inviolable. No one had accessed the sealed chamber, and no biological remains of the emperor were believed available. That is why recent reports of DNA linked to the emperor shocked the world. 
According to Research Insiders, scientists recovered biological traces from sealed bronze weapons and ornaments found in the outer pits. Some of these artifacts, protected by lacquer and stored in near-airtight conditions underground, preserved microscopic organic residues. Using advanced techniques designed for highly degraded samples, researchers extracted fragments of DNA. After comparisons, they concluded that some sequences matched what they believed to be the emperor's paternal line. But the results held a surprise. The sequences did not align solely with early Han Chinese genetic markers. Instead, they showed unexpected connections to lineages associated with Central Asian populations. Groups known for horseback warfare, steppe migrations, and early interactions with Chinese states. This finding, if true, complicates Qin Shi Huang's legacy. The emperor who defined Chinese identity may himself have carried ancestry reaching far beyond the traditional heartland. The implications are enormous. It suggests that ancient China, often portrayed as isolated, may have been shaped more deeply by cross-regional exchanges and migrations than previously understood. Some scientists caution that the sample is small and contamination is always a risk, but the possibility alone is enough to unsettle long-held historical narratives. Reactions The genetic findings immediately attracted attention not only from historians but from government officials. Any claim involving an emperor carries political weight. Some geneticists dismissed the results, arguing that DNA could not survive 2,000 years without significant degradation. Others noted that imperial tombs often used advanced preservation methods, lacquered containers, sealed chambers, and oxygen-limited environments, which could theoretically protect organic material. Rumors spread of private researchers conducting the first analyses before handing samples to authorities. Disputes allegedly arose between scientists eager to publish and officials concerned about national implications. Historians walked cautiously. They acknowledged the enormous significance such DNA would hold, if proven authentic, but stopped short of endorsing the early reports. The Future Impact this discovery opens a Pandora's box of global consequences. Politically, a genetic tie to the first emperor could strengthen national narratives, raise questions about cultural heritage, and spark debates over imperial legitimacy. Scientifically, if DNA can survive for 2,000 years in sealed conditions, new possibilities emerge. Ancient royal tombs worldwide, from Egyptian pharaohs to Middle Eastern rulers, may suddenly become candidates for genetic study. Culturally, the line between legend and reality grows thinner. The ancient aura surrounding ancient emperors becomes something that can be measured and traced. Globally, nations might race to uncover the DNA of their own historic leaders. Institutions may soon need international rules governing the handling of ancient genetic material to prevent geopolitical conflict. Personally, millions of people may wonder whether they carry fragments of the emperor's lineage. Entire genealogy industries could shift toward tracing modern descendants back to ancient rulers. What began as a quiet scientific investigation has now triggered a massive conversation about history, identity, politics, and the nature of power itself. The world may never look at forgotten emperors or the secrets buried with them the same way again. What do you think about this discovery? Let us know in the comments. This does not diminish his achievements. It expands them. It suggests the first emperor may have risen to power in a world far more globalized, far more interconnected than ancient texts reveal. Trade routes, nomadic networks, and intermarriage may have woven cultural threads across the Asian continent long before the Silk Road formally emerged. His DNA becomes a biological map of ancient movements that historians have only guessed at. 
and that map suggests that the rise of early Chinese civilization was influenced not by isolation, but by integration. The second implication lies in the realm of modern identity and nationalism. China places immense value on historical continuity and cultural lineage. The imperial genealogy is more than a record, it is a cornerstone of national memory. A genetic link to non-Han populations could open difficult conversations about who the early Chinese really were. Instead of a single ethnic identity rising from the Yellow River Basin, the picture becomes multicultural, diverse, and complex. That raises questions modern governments may not be eager to address. Identity has political power, and challenging long-standing narratives about ancestry can shift the balance of cultural authority. At the same time, this discovery could encourage a broader and more scientifically grounded recognition that civilizations are rarely the product of a single people. They are forged in the collision of tribes, traders, wanderers, conquerors, and migrants. Instead of weakening national identity, it may strengthen it with a deeper sense of historical richness, showing that China's story, like every great civilization's, is the story of human movement. The third implication concerns ancient DNA science itself. If biological traces from Qin Shi Huang truly survived intact for more than 2200 years, then researchers must reconsider what is possible. Many believe the central tomb was too sealed, too contaminated by mercury, or too degraded for DNA to remain. The new findings prove otherwise. This means other unexcavated royal tombs, Egyptian, Persian, Mesoamerican, and European, may also contain recoverable genetic material. Entire eras could be reopened to scientific investigation. Figures once lost to legend could be tested, their identities confirmed or disproven. Genealogy, archaeology, and forensic science could merge into one unprecedented field. But this leads to the next consequence geopolitical competition. Nations with ancient burial chambers may race to recover and analyze DNA before rivals do. Genetic heritage is power. It represents ownership of history, cultural prestige, and even claims to territory or artifacts. International bodies may soon need to create rules governing how ancient DNA is collected, stored, and interpreted. Without regulation, discoveries could escalate into political conflict. Then there are the ethical dilemmas. Who has the right to test an emperor's DNA? Who controls the data? Should ancient rulers, seen as sacred in many cultures, be subjected to modern scientific scrutiny? What if the results challenge religious beliefs or national myths? These questions will not be easy to answer. On the cultural side, the implications are even more profound. If Qin Shi Huang's lineage extends beyond China's borders, it could inspire a shift in how people around the world view their own ancestry. Millions may find unexpected connections to ancient rulers. Genealogy companies might launch new analyses promising to identify lineages linked to historical figures, whether accurate or not. Families across Asia and beyond may discover traces of ancestry they never imagined. For the first time, the blood of an emperor becomes not just a symbol of power, but a bridge between worlds. In the end, the true impact of this discovery lies in its ability to collapse the distance between past and present. Qin Shi Huang has always seemed larger than life, a conqueror, a visionary, a man who dreamed of immortality. Now, his story steps out of myth and into biology. His DNA becomes the thread connecting one of history's greatest empires to the living world. And if the first emperor's ancestry is more complex than we believed, then perhaps the story of humanity itself is more intertwined, more shared, and more surprising than any history book has dared to tell.